four weeks after thinking of We Will Kayak, these five big challenges, the Isle of Wight was coming around. I'd always wanted to do some sea kayaking and, uh, and this, this was going to be it. Kick check is very important. All the kit on you as well. Otherwise, you might not live. Everybody's out with spinnakers, big boats sailing past and there we were kayaking through the middle of it. On the Saturday and the Sunday we paddled into the darkness, um, which obviously is not advisable. One of the few hovercrafts that are still working in the world uh, came shooting past us at one stage uh, when it's pitch black, so our little light, hopefully, uh, they were able to see that. We had this really strong current against us, and that by now it was dark, so this was actually a bit worrying and the waves were just sort of refracting, bouncing off the cliffs. And at one point we suddenly realised we were perhaps a little bit too far out into the current. Uh, we could see the lights of the, some of the houses and, and we used those to line up where the beach was. There was a huge variety of landscape and these fabulous red beaches and red cliffs on the south coast, it, which is something I remember really clearly, something I just didn't expect. So that was the start of our Big Five adventure and it really was uh, a great start. It was a strange time in Britain. All the headlines were Britain stops. Basically, you could just see snow coming at you through the windscreen. Everyone was freezing cold. Everyone was like, uh, don't go into work. The country literally ground to a halt. It's, it's, it's a long way to paddle. It's really quite tough. The portages were really difficult to see kayaks because the boats are so heavy. We needed to get the tide right. We knew that the duration of the paddle that day would exceed the length of the outgoing tide. I think we knew we'd get everything done in the end, and we did. I wasn't really sure what to expect from the Channel Crossing. This was going to be the first open water, a bit large open water crossing uh, in sea kayaks that I'd, I'd really ever done. We met some other kayakers on the way uh, who had just come over on the ferry uh, that afternoon and we told them what they were doing. They had a good giggle at us because they'd had a pretty rough ride on the ferry. It was about a force four picking up to a force five, pretty lumpy seas in a narrow, relatively narrow English channel, pretty bumpy. We, we crossed both the shipping lanes, didn't see as many ships as we thought and uh, that we might. In the middle of the channel, you actually lose sight of both England and France. I suppose the thing I learned about the channel crossing was it is dull as ditch water when you're in the middle and you can't see anything. You can't see land either side. I remember approaching the, um, the, 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 the coastline and Ashley and I both decided that the reason, the big reason we wanted to get there as soon as possible was we were both dying to have a pee. We just thought we'd go for it and actually it worked out really well. I think the trip to the Isles of Scilly took us all by surprise a little. We knew we were paddling what should have been 32, 33 miles from the tip of Land's End into the Atlantic. But there was the most enormous rolling Atlantic swell. We, we had huge, huge waves, come breaking surf and very windy weather. If we were in one trough and the, uh, and the boat, another boat was in the trough behind, you couldn't see it. We just stopped when we could as well. Everyone was feeling seasick, to be honest. I don't think there was anyone that could say, you know what, I'm really happy, I'm having a great time. And as we got closer, we, we got a welcome from a seal. There was a seal popped up, did a few somersaults. Kayaking around the Isles of Scilly is something that it's one of those you've got to go back for. There's just so much to do. And in the end, I think it was just, just over nine hours it took us. And nine hours is a long time to be sitting in a boat. Nothing could have prepared us for just how big how much, you know, all of the rest of them put together, this was just bigger than all of them. We had a crossing to do from the, which was linked by a series of islands, as I recall. The wildlife was amazing and it was, it was fantastic to be in a place where there, there was so, so many animals and birds that you just wouldn't see at home. Iceberg bits and big lumps of blue ice. It was just simply stunning. And actually, over the course of the journey, sleep was definitely something we didn't get enough of. We, we got to the end in good shape, really, as a, as a unit. So that was, that was nice getting through it.
I think this, you know, you can go somewhere as a tourist and you can jump on a boat, you can jump on a plane, you can do all of that and you can kind of see it through a big glass window or something or you can be up close and really experience it and have it all around you and uh, I know which one I, I prefer.